Musk isn't mincing words. In a company email obtained by CNBC, the Tesla CEO reiterated their need to keep costs under control. He wrote to Tesla workers, investors are giving us a lot of credit for future profitability. But if they conclude that's not going to happen, our stock will immediately get crushed like a souffle under a sledgehammer. <laughs> the stock is at all time highs and set to join the S&P 500 later this month. And by the way, Musk himself was also just named Fortune's business person of the year today after he's leapt frog, uh, leapfrogged Bill Gates is the second richest person in the world. Mike, I wouldn't quibble with his choice as business person of the year. I mean, the, right. he is incredible. The The quibble is with the stock price, and it's fascinating to see Musk himself weigh in on that. It is fascinating, this tone right here. It's prudent. It sounds like what a CEO, what a manager should be doing, saying, don't get complacent. We've had an amazing run. Let's focus on the details. Let's get that profit per vehicle up, even if it's by $0.05, cent, $0.20, cent, $0.50 cent increments over time. The issue is it's probably not even true about the stock. I mean, it's not a half trillion dollar valuation because of those factors. The shareholder base right now is we're saving the world. And if that doesn't work out, we're going to Mars. And so um, it's not clear to me that it's even <laughs> true that if they come in a little short on margins, the stock gets pummeled. What do you think is the biggest risk factor for the stock? Like, what is the one tripwire here? Do we know? I don't think we really know. I really do think it's about, you know, maybe if something causes the fever to break in the general enthusiasm for these very long dated secular growth stories. Uh, obviously, if they do have hiccups in production, they're still consuming capital. They have not plenty of it, of course, but they still have to expand capacity. So there are definitely hurdles that, that the company has to cross. Uh, and if there's any sign that there's market share issues in EVs. I think we're still so early, it's hard to really discern that. But those things, over time, right. would have wear and tear on the, on the stock. Yeah, the new Hummer, you know, looks pretty good. Deirdre, <laughs> what would you add? <laughs> um, I would add one thing that some analyst somewhere is writing down, crush like a souffle under a sledgehammer as the title of a future note, uh, aside from that. Um, it's interesting. Does it sound a little tone deaf? This is what I wonder. Elon Musk became the second richest person in the world this year. So he's telling his employees, you get to cut costs, pinch pennies wherever you can uh, so that we can you know, keep this run going. But I tend to agree with Mike there that this is what a good manager does, a good CEO does. You have to keep your eye on costs, even when the stock is surging. What? Uh, many, That's many a, fold an interesting this year. point. All right. Now, Mike, I just got to ask you this one. Ironically, Musk is rich because the stock price is so high. Yes. So if he ever had to, like, personally keep funding the business to Deirdre's point about how it seems a little, you know, a little tone deaf, wouldn't he have to sell the stock? And then that would I mean, then the stock would drop. I'm sure there are plenty oh. of other buyers, but it's not you know, he's not a liquid second richest person in the world. No, he's not liquid. I mean, no, none of them are. I mean, at this point, that's how you get, re you know, you're, you're wealthy on paper only. Um, so I think we're so far from having to worry about that. He can peel off. stock. By the way, it wasn't that long ago we were talking about how oh, he's got margin debt against his holdings. He might actually be trapped by right. the stock price going down. I mean, we are so far in the money on that stock based compensation with this company is a billion and a half dollars on like 30 billion in revenue this year. Wow, that's impressive. All right, let's move along. Talk some Airbnb today. Uh, it's a buy even though you can't buy it yet, apparently. Atlantic Equities initiated its coverage on Airbnb with an overweight rating and a $75 price target, saying they have, quote, significant secular growth potential and a powerful brand setting them apart from competition. Airbnb is set to debut on the NASDAQ later this month, ticker ABNB. Atlantic also said the IPO, and this is what's interesting to me, Deirdre, couldn't have been any better timed. What do they mean by that? <laughs> um, I think basically they are talking about Airbnb's sheer resilience. I mean, they have wanted to go public for a number of years. They haven't. It was going to be earlier this year. Of course, they were hit really, really hard by the pandemic, but they have shown the company's resiliency. And one thing that note says that I would narrow in on is brand strength. And this is where Airbnb really excels. There was a line that I found one of the most interesting lines in that IPO prospectus that said they get something like 90% plus of their bookings directly or through unpaid channels. That is just stands in such stark contrast to the Expedia, the booking holdings of the world that have to rely on a search engine like Google that, you know, may eventually and is already competing with them. So when it comes to the home rental, the home sharing market, Airbnb um, is certainly the strongest brand. And the other guys are just trying to catch up. Julia, what would you say? 
I would say not only is this a strong brand, but the timing is great, Kelly, because they saw a surge in users and many of them New Year's users going to Airbnb to rent houses that were out of the city, out in rural areas. And so I think it'll be really interesting to see how they hold on to those users and they get them to stick around and book more. My family's an example. We went and rented a house on Airbnb because we just needed to get out of Los Angeles. I think this is a perfect opportunity for them to not only show that these are customers that are going to come back, but maybe see that it's a better alternative to hotels over the next year or so as people start having the option of returning back to hotels, Kelly. Julia, there's some nice places in Nevada, you know. <laughs> oh, there, there, are, there are a lot of places, Kelly, but what I think is really interesting here is that it's all about getting out of uh, getting out of those big cities. And the question is how many of those users that they saw during this pandemic were new users? And also, Kelly, have to point out, this is a company that cut 25% of its staff. So this is, you know, speaking of uh, showing that efficiency that Elon Musk was pointing to, this idea that they could cut their staff, they could focus on margins and can figure out how to operate even in these tough times, that resilience. That's a great point. It's like they've proven the right kind of maturity uh, to go public at this point. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.